Hello everybody, I'm James Lee Hart and this is Lee Hart Tech Support. On today's episode I'm going to demonstrate how to install a Hackintosh. So what is a Hackintosh you might ask? A Hackintosh is essentially a way to run Apple's macOS operating system on non-Apple hardware. Of course you could run macOS on a virtual machine but then you won't have hardware acceleration for your GPU and now I'm assuming most people watching this video will want macOS for software such as Final Cut Pro where your GPU acceleration is therefore essential. So without further ado let's get started. Okay so before we get started there are some requirements. So firstly you're going to need a USB drive and make sure it is at least 8GB. Um, for this tutorial I'm going to be using this 32GB SanDisk drive. Next you're going to need a copy of Mac OS. For this tutorial I'm going to be using High Sierra. For viewers using the Nvidia graphics card this is going to be the highest Mac OS you can use. Nvidia graphics cards use the Nvidia web driver which Apple stops signing from Harvey onwards. If you want graphics acceleration then you're going to have to stick with High Sierra. Ok moving forward we're going to need some software. Now depending on how you want to install Mac OS you do have some choices available to you. Now personally I've always found success using a Hackintosh zone as an Irish build. Now for some reason some people do warn against using this, however I found zero problems and so this is my personal build of choice and the build of choice that we're going to be using for today. I will do a second tutorial in the future using OpenCore. But for now let's stick to Nairish and I've provided a link to it below in the description. Now the next piece of software you will need is called Transmac. Transmac will convert your USB drive into a bootable USB drive ready to install macOS onto your hardware. Later on we are going to need some more additional software but for now let's get making a USB drive and boot it into the install. Ok now that you've downloaded Transmac open it up and select your USB drive from the panel on the left. Right click on your USB drive and press restore with disk image. Find the disk image you just downloaded and then allow Transmac to do its thing. It will take several minutes for Transmat to restore your USB. Once your USB is ready, it's time to move on into booting into the Mac installer. Ok now that your USB drive is ready it's time to move forward with the installation. For this tutorial I'm going to be using my HP EliteBook 8460p. Now unless you're using the exact same system as me your installation will go differently. However using Nyrish's build it will allow you to boot up into the install to at least get Mac installed on your system. Post installation of drivers will be different. Personally however I've used my Irish build on my desktop and ever done installing Nvidia's web drivers I've had no additional drivers to install. I do recommend though that for first time users to test Mac on a desktop first. This will give you the best compatibility as laptops do vary depending on the hardware installed. Mac only works on specific Wi-Fi cards for example and not all graphics cards will work. Using a desktop will give you the best compatibility to work with. Ok so let's now start editing some BIOS settings. Now depending on your system to enter the BIOS may be different but for my system it's pressing F10. So let's start by turning on the machine and then pressing F10 to enter the BIOS. Go to boot options and disable fast boot and enable UFEI boot mode. Go down to SATA and make sure AHCI is enabled. Disable virtualization and hyperthreading. Make sure to turn wireless LAN switching off and wake on LAN dis disabled. You would also need to disable your serial port. Ok once that's done save your settings and exit. Restart the system and then press F9 to enter the boot options. Make sure you boot from your USB drive. Ok 
Once booted into the USB drive, press the first option. Okay, now we're entering the install. So select your language and then click next. Click continue. Agree to the terms and conditions. And now go to utilities and then disk utility. Once Disk Utility is loaded, on the View drop down menu, select Show All Devices, then select your hard drive. Next, press Arrays. Give your hard drive a name, and then in the scheme, select GUID Partition Map. Click Arrays, and then your hard drive will be erased. Once that's done, close Disk Utility, and then open a terminal. In the terminal, type in date 09270000017 and press enter. Close the terminal and then quit the terminal to enter back to the install screen. Then press mark and then customize. Next, we're going to select some boot options. So, drop down the menu. So, we want to enable Voodoo HDA audio, then the graphics, and select backup graphics tech X, and then click on graphics enabler. Next, under chipset text, drop down and then make sure totally fixed is selected. Next, on laptop drivers, we can select both. Leave High Sierra USB fixes as the same. And again, don't select anything of fake PCID. OX fixes can be um, stay the same. Click your hard drive and then click continue and to, we will start the installation. The installation will take several minutes, roughly around 20 to 30 minutes depending on your hardware configuration. Okay, now at the end of the installation, your machine will reboot. Okay, now that your machine's rebooted, you'll be greeted with a Mac OS loading screen. But firstly, you need to select your location, what type of keyboard you have. My computer does not have an internet connection. Keep clicking next through all these next options and then give yourself a username and password. Once your Mac has been set up, you'll be greeted with the new desktop. Click continue and then press the button next to the shift. Nyrish would then begin installing its own settings and so let this continue and then reboot once it's finished. Okay, great, we've got Mac OS installed, so that's the end of this tutorial. Well, not quite. 
there are some things that haven't yet been installed. Uh, I've got nothing coming through on my Atmos. Our Wi-Fi is not working and our trackpad isn't working, so we're going to fix that in these next steps. So in the video description I have provided another link and this will link through to a zip drive which will have all the post installation files we need. Okay so first things first we need to replace the EFI file with the one I provided in the zip drive. So open the Mac Tools folder and then extract the replace your EFI file with this. Open Clover Configurator and then mount your EFI drive. So mark the partition and then open it. Everything in that folder needs to be replaced with the new folder that I provided. So you just copy and drag over. And then press replace. I've also click apply to all. Once that's done, restart your system and we'll move on to the next steps. Okay, now that your system's rebooted, we need to install some Kex files. So if you go to Launchpad and then click on Kex Wizard. In the Mac Tools folder I gave you, if you open the post install Kex file folder and then drag all the Kex over to select Kex to install. You can forget system info. Drag them over and then press install. You will not need to type in your username and password. Click OK and let the Kex install and then restart your system. Once we're back on the desktop, you can see that our Wi-Fi and LAN still isn't working, so that's what we'll work on next. So open up the Mac Tools folder, and then open the HP ProBook installer. Double click on the install to begin the installation. So there are a few options in here. What I select is my own model, so yours may be different, you've got a different model. Uh, it's important to know that I'm selecting the HP installer with the Intel graphics. If you've got AMD graphics, then select the AMD option. So again, business model, the 8460p. And the fun behavior, use the original fun patch. And display type, use the 1366 by 68 screen. You can select the Elite Book logos and the fixed EID, and then press install. Type in your password and then install the software. Once that's installed, you'll need to run Vietnam Tools. So double click on Vietnam Tools and then double click on the install. The install is pretty much the same as the HP installation, just some different options to select. So click continue, continue, continue and then agree to the settings, then drop down text, click on battery, and then on graphics, sorry on network, then click your Broadcom Wi-Fi, and then on graphics select the ACPI backlight and then the HD3000 VGA port. You won't need to select the HD VGA port if you aren't using Intel. If you use AMD then you don't need to select this option. And the trackpad, click synapsics and then click both drive and USB and then fixes and then press continue to install. Again type in your password and then install the software. 
Once the installation is finished, you'll need to restart your computer. Okay, so let's boot back into the desktop by entering our password. And then we can see what options have been installed. So as you can see now, the Wi-Fi is installed. So let's just type in our username and password for the Wi-Fi. And then if we click on about this mark, we will see that the options aren't properly set. So to, do, to fix this, we need to go to Clover Configurator. We need to mount our EFI partition. Once that's mounted, if you click the home screen button and then under EFI, click config.plist. Next, go to SMBIOS. And then on the drop down list, you need to select the BIOS which best suits your machine. For this, I'm using the MacBook Pro 11.2 option. Make sure you tick trust and then generate a new serial. Click it a few times to make sure it works properly. Close this option and press OK. So we go to system preferences and then down to network we can see our ethernet is not working and not installed so open up vietnam tools again Go to Network, Ethernet, and then select the Intel, and then Apple, Ethernet. Install that, and then restart your machine. Okay, now that the machine's started, if we click on our About Mac again, we can now see that our Mac has been changed. Our graphics are working, and so is our Wi-Fi. And so is our Ethernet. So by plugging the Ethernet cable, we can quickly test to see whether the Ethernet is working. Now with the green light, we can see the Ethernet is working. So if we open up Safari, we can see whether some websites will load up for us. Let's start with Google. And then let's try Facebook. Okay, great, so I think that's working fine now. So you can delete these extra folders if you need to. Um, it doesn't really matter. And so there you have it, a fully working Hackintosh computer. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you have, click like and then the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified of any new episodes coming. I'm James Lee Hart and this has been Lee Hart Tech Support. See you soon.